Good afternoon and welcome to the Office of Economic Development Business Information Session. My name is Margaret McGee. I'm the Business Services Manager. Business services assist entrepreneurs and business owners in starting and growing their business. We help in navigating through the different departments within city government to obtain permits and licenses. We also connect the business community with organizations that could provide technical assistance, incentives, resources, and other programs beneficial in operating a business. One way we do this is to host business information sessions. These sessions are held throughout the year and topics are gathered from entrepreneurs, surveys, and information we collect from the business community. This is the last of three sessions and they were all focusing on funding opportunities. Today we have Ms. Marsha Garrier, the founder of Her Sweet Spot, a digital platform and membership community. We also have Mr. Daniel Friedman, a commercial lender for Hope Credit Union. Hope provides financial services leverage resources and engage, I'm sorry, not Hope Credit Union, he's from Lyft Fund. And he is actually gonna join us a little short today. He had another meeting, so he'll join in uh, once that meeting is over. They both uh, will share information about their organization and funding opportunities available. To keep down distractions, I ask that attendees please turn your videos off and mute your speakers. Please place all questions in the chat box and we'll get to them as soon as possible. All handouts provided to me will be shared within 24 to 48 hours um, once the meeting has ended. Now I'll go ahead and turn it over to Ms. Marsha. We have to unmute first. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Margaret, for having me um, present to your community today. I'm going to share my screen so I could just walk you through the opportunities we have inside her sweet spot. Okay, great. Sure everyone can see my screen now. So I'm going to be walking you through just the two top grant opportunities that are available to you inside her sweet spot. And we consider ourselves the friends and family funders for the unfundable. What does that mean? That means her sweet spot loves to provide uh, financial opportunities to uh, women who typically can't get access um, to capital. Like I said, I'm Marcia Guerriere, the founder of Her Sweet Spot. I am a TEDx speaker, best-selling author, podcaster. I also uh, have founded a nonprofit organization. I come to you with over 30 years experience working in the financial services and financial technology industry. So I'm taking the experience I had building successful um, tech startups and Fortune 500 startups to do that for people that look like uh, you and I. Uh, I have been awarded with uh, awards from organizations at the state level and um, corporate level, been featured in media, and uh, most importantly, I've secured over $500,000, and that now, that number is even more than that, in financial sponsorship, in kind, and media. And today, I'm going to present to you two of our opportunities that we have that is hosted at Her Sweet Spot. The first one is the Her Rise micro grant. Since 2017, it actually started in 2014 with our pitch competitions, but in 2017 we consistently awarded one woman of one woman of color small business owner with a micro grant. We started with grants of $100 to 250 to 500 and now we are at providing $1,000 grants each month. And we, we look forward to building 
more relationships uh, and getting access to our own funding so that we could grow our um, opportunity to give more. The grant provides women, like I said, who traditionally can't get funding through traditional sources, access to this capital. We also provide technical assistance through workshops each month. We host workshops in our four pillars of success framework, which is mindset, money, marketing, and media, really helping women develop their business plans and marketing plans through our uh, technical support. To date, we've given over, over uh, $300,000 in non-equity grants as well as services. We do it in a number of ways. It's our pitch competition, our monthly application process, as well as our um, Elevate Her Cohort program that um, is now approaching its third year cycle. Applications have not begun yet for that program. But just to talk to you a little bit about um, the Horizon Micro Grant and the process for that. The process for our grant is that for every month, beginning of the first day of the month to the last day of the month, applications received within that month are eligible for a grant within that month. Um, we announce our grant winners. Our committee reads every application on a daily basis and weekly basis together until the final day of the month, we sit together, um, we shortlist our um, finalists throughout the month's process as we're reading them. And then we come together and select a winner at the end of the month. And on the first Friday of the month, we announce the winners at our first Friday monthly mixer where we come together, practice our pitch, network um, with each other on the first Friday mixers. Uh, and then the process thereafter, you do not need to be present to be selected. The process after that is going to be for us to notify the recipient via an email and um, an agreement that just has to be signed that you will not use this for anything illegal or that's not um, you know, submitted on your application. And once that's done, you have the opportunity, we'll send you, we'll mail you a check and uh, then you will have the opportunity to join me for the Her, Her Sweet Spot podcast, where we will further amplify your, your business through our podcast. And you will also have a graphic created for you where we celebrate you on social media and introduce you to our social community on all of our platforms. Um, who should apply for this grant? This grant is earmarked for women of color entrepreneurs from diverse fields, is not industry um, specific. You must be 51% owned by um, women of color, registered in the new in US um, and have revenue less than a million. I know that sounds like a lot, but you'd be surprised. I've gotten applications for people making millions of money, but this program is really specifically um, geared towards a mark for women who are um, building great businesses, have good ideas, and just need a little bit of seed money, right? That planting, we're planting seeds of hope to help women um, go further along in their business. There is a $10 administration fee for submitting your application on her sweet spot. And we use that to ensure that we continue to have committee members that will support uh, reading and going through the process for um, the applications. The next grant that we have on our platform is the Hustlers Grant. The Hustlers Grant is a uh, personal grant provided by Deja Vu Parker, radio personality of the national syndicated Deja Vu show in collaboration with Her Sweet Spot. We're excited to bring this um, grant to uh, our platform. If you are a listener and are familiar with Deja Vu Parker, not only is she the nationally syndicated host of her own show, but she is also the uh, announcer for the Kelly and Mark show on, um, a, again, another, another nationally syndicated platform. And she is well known for her motivational speaking to entrepreneurs through her hustlers tips 
um, and you know, our mission here and her mission was really to uh, partner with an organization and a platform that she believes is doing the work. Uh, I have known her for some years and she understands the mission that I have and the, the, the entrepreneurs that we are trying to support. So how can you get access to this grant? Again, you would go head over to hersweetspot.com. Each month, the same as her RISE grant, there is another committee that is dedicated to reviewing the Hustlers grant my, um, applications. There are two separate grants, but administ both administered at her sweet spot. And each uh, the winners will have an opportunity to meet Deja Vu herself, um, interview with her for a quick uh, interview and a segment that will be aired on her syndicated, nationally syndicated radio show. Your name will be announced on the program and then at a later date, we'll meet so that you can um, record a segment with her to further be um, amplified through her radio show and on her social media platforms. Who is eligible for this grant? The grant is open to any small business in the US. It is not for women only or men only. It is not for women of color or men of color. It is open to any small business. Um, a diverse group of entrepreneurs are eligible as long as you are registered in the US, make again less than a million. And hopefully you're listening to Deja Vu on the radio or um, following her on her social media platforms and um, to really just get continue to get updated on what's happening with the micro grant. This grant program started this year and we have awarded already four grants and we're, we're in the midst of finding, um, uh, completing and announcing the um, last month's grant. And those are all the opportunities that are housed on Her Sweet Spot. But Her Sweet Spot, as I mentioned, is a digital platform for women of color. And we're not just for women of color, but we primarily um, market and gear towards women of color. But the platform itself has a plethora of resources. Uh, when you are a member of our academy, you have access to all of our um, video libraries with interviews with other leading uh, leaders in corporate America, as well as the entrepreneur um, space. You have access to our um, resources tab and a funding finder that just will list out additional funding opportunities um, that we believe um, most of our community members will have access to or be eligible to apply for. So we we try to tailor their, their hundreds and thousands of funding opportunities out there, but we try to tailor things for our community and list the ones that we believe are most geared towards uh, the women of color that are represent her sweet spot. Um, I would love to answer any questions you have about our platform and our programming, as well as um, if you have any questions regarding these grant opportunities. As I mentioned from time to time, we do provide pitch competitions that is open nationwide. We're currently in a planning phase for a national tour, which will go around the country in five of our largest markets of her sweet spot, which would be Atlanta, Florida, Texas, and California, and back, back in New York, where I am uh, located. And we, we hope to see you there at this event. You will have the opportunity to submit yourself uh, for pitching for, and typically our pitch competitions um, go from 2,500 to 5,000, no, 1,000, 2,500 and 5,000 to uh, recipients that are pitching. So I will open it up now to any questions you may have. Actually, uh, Marsha, we'll go ahead and I see Daniel has joined us. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, we'll let Daniel. Um, okay, there he is. So yeah. Mr. Daniel Freeman is the Vice President, I'm sorry, VP Business Development Officer with Lift Fund. Lift Fund provides small business loans for women and minority and startups in New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Shreveport, Lafayette, and throughout Louisiana. So we'll now have Mr. Friedman. Awesome, thank you, Margaret. 
Let me get settled here with sharing my presentation. Let's see if I get this to work properly. I'm beginning. All right, I think we're good to go. Uh, pleased to be here with everyone virtually today. Um, so I'm going to go through this uh, PowerPoint to convey as much information as I can. And I think I might be going a little bit quickly because um, there's a lot packed into it, but I made sure to share the uh, presentation with Margaret to get out to all of y'all afterwards, um, as well as some you know flyers about our different loan programs. Um, so I'll go ahead and get into it. Um, so uh, Lift Fund um, is a, a community development financial institution. Um, and our mission is specifically to provide credit and services to clients that can't get it from a more traditional source. So a lot of the times that's uh, newer businesses, um, different sectors that banks deem to be, you know, a little bit too risky or not their appetite, um, and different credit histories, um, smaller loans that aren't as profitable. The list kind of goes on and, you know, I'll delve a little bit more into that. Uh, but just to give you a sense of who we are, um, so we are a CDFI, which is a treasury program, a whole network of CDFIs across the country. Uh, Lift Fund happens to be one of the larger, um, depending on how you measure, and uh, very close partners with the Small Business Administration. So we do a lot of 7A loans, which I'll talk about later, uh, micro loans, uh, and in the state of Texas, where we're headquartered uh, in the 504 program. So. We've been um, operating for 30 years. Um, kind of a fun update is that um, our founder retired and we now have a new um, chief executive officer who is from New Orleans. So there's kind of a renewed focus on um, lending in Louisiana in general um, and uh, hopefully some uh, new partnerships uh, coming online soon for different special programs and things like that. Um, so just to give you an idea, uh, you know, again, about the organization, um, this is our lending footprint. Again, uh, Texas is our headquarters, San Antonio specifically. Um, we have a lot of offices throughout Texas. Um, and then, um, you know, kind of operating more virtually. I'm here in New Orleans. Um, but, uh, yeah, definitely, you know, trying to expand these different markets. And I think uh, at this point in time, um, we really have the tools to do so. Um, a lot of uh, kind of lessons learned from the pandemic, you know, kind of going virtual and um, yeah, again, just different programs, which I'll explain about that kind of help get dollars into the hands of folks like you. So um, yeah, not to belabor the point, but just over the years, uh, you know, we've had $6 billion in economic impact which kind of comes from a study that was done on Lift Fund, where for every dollar that we lend, there's a $14 return on investment in terms of the community impact. You can think about the jobs created, you know, and of course there's taxes at every stage in terms of when you sell and income tax and these kinds of things. Um, so, you know, it really is a, a ripple effect. And you here that are the audience, the ones with the small business, uh, established or that you're starting are, are truly the uh, engines that power you know, your communities and um, you know the, the local economies. So we've been glad to be able to support that with over 25,000 loans um, and you know tens of thousands, I guess, approaching hundreds of thousands of jobs created and retained. Um, this is a little snapshot of what we have done uh, specifically in Louisiana since we uh, entered in 2009. Uh, I believe this um, is accurate through the end of 2022. I think we're still updating last year's numbers, but pretty accurate um, in terms of uh, the types of folks that we're working with. The average loan size, I will say, I think has increased since then. Um, but uh, I think throughout Lit Fund's footprint, it's about 30 or 40,000. Um, so in a sense, we are truly micro lenders, um, but as I'm sure everyone knows here, you know, 16,000 doesn't get you as much as it used to. Um, so we are, you know, doing a lot more, um, I guess, just to, you know, comment on one aspect of that, you know, these days at Lift Fund, um, you can access potentially up to $50,000 just with bank statements. Uh, whereas in the past, that might have been 20,000. But, you know, even up to 50, we don't necessarily need 
profit and loss and balance sheet and taxes and you know, as much documentation um, as in years past. So um, yeah, again, just kind of speeding along here. Uh, I want to get to some of the more meaty parts later in this presentation, but um, in terms of the areas of uh, service and you know the products we offer um, under funding, they're all going to be uh, long-term installment loans. So uh, we don't have, we're not a bank, you know, or a depository institution. We don't have checking accounts. We don't have credit cards and lines of credits and all these different things. Very simple, just long-term installment loans for businesses and uh, and startups. Um, ranging anywhere from $500 to $500,000. Um, you know, I have loans that I've done, $800 loan to uh, a lady in, in Mississippi. And, um, you know, my colleagues have stories like that. So it can get pretty micro or, or nano might even be a better word for it. Um, and then, you know, on the higher end, $500,000 for the real estate program, which I do have a slide on later. Um, also want to kind of tease out the bullet point there about special loan programs. Um, so different incentives, uh, especially below 100,000 um, and when there's uh, sufficient collateral for the loan, which we're very flexible in what we count as collateral and how we value it, um, you know, like vehicles and business assets that may have already or be purchasing. But long story short, um, the HEROES program for veterans, first responders program, you know, as it sounds, or this high energy efficiency transformation is kind of a fancy phrase for anything green energy that's, you know, reducing the carbon footprint, um, reduced interest rates on all those across the board. So uh, sometimes as low as 3% for that green energy one, 5% for veterans. Uh, I think the first responders kind of varies on the loan amount, but, you know, I think it's seven or 9% compared to our typical interest rate, which is 12 and a half percent. So, um, you know, if there's something that um, we can identify for you that will give you a better, you know, term, interest rate, um, we're certainly going to do so, you know, as a nonprofit partner, um, we're really trying to make a win-win scenario for, for our clients and us. Um, and outside of funding, we do have the business education piece. So we do one-on-one -on -one, uh, consultations, workshops, accelerator programs. A lot of cool stuff. I would encourage you to, to go to the website of Lift Fund, just liftfund.com, and you can see what different um, events. Like we had a whole series. Um, there might be one more session this month, actually, but on like pricing your product. It's not Louisiana focused. Um, so a lot of good material there. And as well as like, for example, our client marketplace, you can go see what kind of small business clients we've worked with and we are kind of feature on our website. So you can kind of shop small, so to speak. Um, and then in general, you know, the reason it says networks and resource there is that um, when you talk to someone at LiftFund, you know, we try to approach um, the conversation very holistically. So if you need to, um, let's say you need a more of a factoring company for accounts receivable or, you know, really need to be working on your credit or whatever it is, you know, we're connected to different folks that, you know, we can probably make that introduction and, and help you along the way so that, you know, it's not just uh, kind of a cold, you know, oh, you need a loan, you don't need a loan. It's more, you know, what are you trying to accomplish? You know, let's talk through it and, and see where we can plug you in. So just wanted to emphasize that. Um, yeah, moving right along with grants. Everyone is, you know, my last speaker, uh, you know, it's all about grants. So Lift Fund is involved in grants, which is why I had this slide. But for the most part, we're doing loans. Um, when we do grants, it's kind of in partnership with, uh, usually a municipality, uh, perhaps a foundation. Um, there's nothing in Louisiana right now on my radar, but um, if you go to the funding options on our website or sign up for our newsletter, you can be sure to, you know, um, be alerted when something does come online. And um, I, I do think there is some sort of program um, coming for, for the Louisiana region soon. So. Uh, I just want to, I guess, sort of tease that and mention that grants are on our mind, but uh, for right now, um, we're just talking about, uh, you know, the great installment loans with interest rate. So, um, yeah, again, just uh, business education, um, liftfund.com slash events for that. I'm going to go ahead and speed on through here to, to talk more about the business funding, because um, as I mentioned before, there's, there's different programs, right, that... 
um, maybe have different interest rates or, um, you know, that uh, we kind of don't expect you to, to know about. It's more of like, hey, here's, you know, something that sweetens the deal a little bit. But in terms of uh, you as the end user, you want to know, how do I qualify? You know, what do I need to work on? And so I wanted to kind of jump into that so that we can really get you uh, eligible for the most amount of money or kind of learn about what you might need to do to prepare for, for such a request. So in general, most likely nine times out of 10, maybe even higher than that, um, you know, your business is going to qualify for a lift fund. You know, we work with all different types of business sectors. Um, in the cases that it's not, um, you know, adult entertainment, kind of an obvious one, but also if it's more speculative, like um, short term, you know, real estate flipping, that's not something that we get involved with. Um, we don't do anything uh, related to lending. You know, if you're if you have a lending company um, or, you know, some other, you know, nuanced scenarios like that. But um, yeah, in, at the end of the day, probably the thing that I would drive home the most is to reach out and talk to us. And we can advise you on you know what we can do or don't do or can't do with you. Um, <clears throat> in terms of um, other basic eligibility, as you can see on the screen here, um, we do not have a time and business requirement, and that is, I think, a big reason why a lot of folks get funneled to Live Fund, um, not only from our banking partners but also um, other CDFIs don't necessarily lend to startups. And at Live Fund, we say a startup is um, six months or less of generating revenue. So, you know, at SBA, I believe it's one year or less. A lot of traditional banks say two years, sometimes even three years or less. So about a third of our loans are going to what we deem as startups, six months or less. And um, overwhelmingly, you know, those other categories scaling up to a more established business is, is really our sweet spot for lending, I would say. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, just some other things to kind of tease out here. You just want to make sure in the last six months, especially that you haven't uh, you know missed any mortgage or vehicle payments, uh, no write-offs. Um, uh, we utilize TransUnion at, at Lift Fund, and just kind of knowing what's on your report, kind of where you stand on not only the score but also your history, I would say is very key. Um, and you know if you do apply. It's going to be a hard inquiry and we're going to let you know, you know, if there's something on there, but, you know, so, sooner that you can identify that, perhaps avoid the inquiry that affects your score a little bit, the better. Um, but, um, yeah, I guess the other kind of important piece there is if you are a startup, um, you must have an existing source of income outside of the business. Um, and that's what we're going to utilize to uh, do the repayment and analysis. Um, got a whole slide on credit here. So um, we don't have an official minimum credit score, um, but a lot of the times we're utilizing the SBA 7A program, which has its own scoring system. And it seems to be correlated around maybe a 640 and above FICO score. And that's really gonna help um, as I'll point out in the next slide, um, if it's a startup, if there's limited collateral, especially larger loan amounts, you know, above 50,000 up to 350,000. Um, but you can have uh, a bankruptcy in your past. You can have um, collections or write-offs even that are not medical related that maybe you haven't paid off yet um, and still access 5, 10, 15,000 at lift fund. You know, ultimately you want to pay those things down and clean up your credit and, you know, be able to access larger amounts. But um, we do loans sometimes in the upper 500s in terms of FICO score for those smaller amounts just to kind of get you started. Um, so it, it's more of a holistic look at it. So it's a little tough to say, you know, you need this score specifically. Um, but, uh, you know, that's trying to boil it down a little bit for you all just to get an idea where we're coming from, kind of how flexible we are on certain things. Um, in terms of like the... Uh, I'll give you, yeah, just maybe a couple other things to think about here. Let's say you want to borrow a hundred thousand, um, and your score with FICO is 700, you know, quite good, but you've never borrowed that much. You've only ever borrowed 10, 15, 20,000. Um, just that one kind of item that might or probably will be limiting in terms of 
let's start you off with 40, 50,000, maybe pay that over the course of six months. And then you can come back and, and try to reapply for a larger amount or something like this, where we can kind of grow with you. Um, so just to, you know, an idea of like, it's not just as cut and dry as the score, just kind of like a trade off pluses and minuses of working with the CDFI, you know, we're um, not as uh, kind of hard lined on certain things, but because we're looking at so many different factors um, and I guess in part because we've done you know, so many loans over the years, we kind of know what works and what doesn't work. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I guess don't want to get too carried away on this, but I know it's a uh, top of mind kind of question everyone has about credit. Um, last comments, I'll say, um, if it is a business loan, but it, it's going to be personally guaranteed. So it's going to show up on your personal credit as a business loan that's secured that way, unless it's, I think, over 100,000, at which point um, it's not going to show up on your personal credit because we know that might start to affect your ability to maybe apply for a mortgage somewhere else if it looks like you have this giant debt, you know, hanging over you or what have you. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and move on and definitely want to leave time for questions and everything at the end. So just a couple more slides here on our more popular program, um, the SBA 7A. So um, again, like limited collateral, startup business, um, this, we were the second most active 7A community advantage lender in the country. Um, and I think a lot of folks uh, get a little scared about SBA because, you know, it's a federal program and it sounds like a lot of paperwork and that kind of thing. Um, but we've really, uh, you know, just kind of refined the process and we're here to work with you. Um, you know, have a new applicant checklist and a frequently asked uh, questions document to share with anyone who's interested and, um, we're a delegated authority, so the actual SBA part of it only takes a business day or two to uh, kind of confirm what work Lift Fund has done internally. So it's really just about collecting the documents, um, you know, kind of seeing what your income is according to the taxes, um, making sure you have that excess you know, after you've paid your household expenses and all your other monthly debts to to take on the loan. Um, and um and yeah, so, you know, I, I would say, you know, don't get, you know, too uh, feeling some sort of way about SBA. It's really a, a great program that allows us to extend the term up to 10 years so the payments less and do a lot more loans that, that we would otherwise wouldn't do. Um, so as you can see here, like, you know, three to four weeks, I'd say is pretty typical. Um, the larger ones, you know, maybe closing is at that 60 day mark. Um, but, you know, compared to some other lenders, months and months, you know, we're pretty quick. So a um, couple of things to point out there, which I think I did touch on already. But so if you have an existing business, uh, if you're reporting a loss on your tax return or you're writing everything off to, you know, pay less to Uncle Sam, it's going to be really tough to approve you for a loan because um, Lift Fund's not going to be um, focusing on your projected income in terms of after the loan and you know, how well you're going to be forecasting to do. Of course, we want you to be successful and we're gearing up for that, but you really have to have that foundation um, going into the loan request to take on that debt because, you know, things happen, right? You know, whether it's a hurricane or a pandemic or the list goes on, you know, life events. Um, so we just want to make sure that the debt's not a burden to you and that you're truly prepared for it, regardless of what the future holds. Um, and so similarly, that goes back to what I mentioned before, if you're in a new business, you want to have that source of income that you can maintain. So whether you're, you know, working nine to five and working on the business in the evenings and weekends or some combination of that, or it doesn't even necessarily have to be a W-2 job, it could be a rental income or, you know, social security or veteran benefit or a co-borrower or someone else in your household, but some sort of income that we can rely on. You know, that's what we're going to utilize for and, and how we are able to do so many uh, startup loans. Um, so, yeah, just rounding it off here, commercial real estate program up to 500,000. Um, you know, the down payment is 10 percent. I think it's a little bit more accessible than some other offerings out there. So it could be for a business owner occupied real estate or if you have some experience um, in property management and you're trying to create some more affordable housing in a rural area or a, a low to moderate income neighborhood, um, you know, you can use this program to do so. Um, 
as long as you're not you know building something or expanding the square footage, but we can help you acquire the property, um, you know, renovate some things, um, and kind of go from there. So hope I'm uh, on time here. I guess Margaret will let me know, but I'll uh, end here with uh, my contact information and thank you, thank you all for hearing me out. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marsha and Daniel, um, for all of that good information that you provided. Um, looking in at the chat, I don't see too many questions. Um, one said, where is the grants for minority, female, and disabled veterans? I'm missing one. Could you unmute yourself and... Give us a little more detail. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you all for having this class meeting. Thank you very much. Um, I am uh, African-American female and a disabled vet. And I was under the impression that there are grants out there just for the, that category in which I fit all three, but I can't seem to find them on the website, like the grants? Okay, I'll answer really quick. Um, if you receive my, my emails every Friday, I have a section um, at the bottom of the email and it lists different grants. And I think one of the, the listings there, it says veterans um, is not a combination. So it's like three different links you could click on. Mm -hmm. And I'll let Marsha, um, if she have any additional information, answer. We do from time to time get sponsors that are um, funding grants specifically for uh, the veteran population. Uh, we don't have one right now, but our existing small business grant is open for women of color is open to vets and nonprofits as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And I would be remiss to say, Daniel, we're always looking for partners. So if Lift Fund would like to partner to uh, create a specific fund for Louisiana, we, we'd love to do that. We, uh, Her Sweet Spot is a national program and we do have a nonprofit arm to uh, the organization that we work, that we use to work with our uh, funding partners. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'll have to connect you with my colleague, Mark Bucri, who's the market executive, does the kind of partnership stuff. So things are happening live and in action here, so that's cool. Yes, um, <laughs> I love the partnership going on here. <laughs> and and just to, to comment on the, the veteran side of things, at least, um, you know, not so much, I guess, uh, a grant, but just outside of, um, well, I guess the two ways that we work with veterans at Lift Fund is either through that reduced interest rate if we can qualify you for 5%, sometimes it's even 0% if we have the right funding allocated um, and there's collateral and it's a micro loan, or if it's a 7A loan, um, our one-time fee, we cut that in half for our veterans. And it's just a matter of uploading the uh, DD-214 and, uh, and you qualify just with that. So doing what we can in that regard. Okay, so Ashley, uh, you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? I was, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, I was just asking, um, does, does Lift Fund also um, do business with restaurants? Are they allowed to, for the funding? Yeah, absolutely. Um, food industry uh, is very popular. Um, first SBA microloan I did was for a food trailer in Slidell, and there's a lot of success stories like that. And yeah, brick and mortar restaurants, whether it's uh, starting one and you know going into that storefront brick and mortar or second location or what have you. Um, I will be, I guess, transparent and say that We've done so many that uh, and had some that haven't performed as everyone would hope. So we're a little bit more cautious in some ways, just making sure that, um, you know, your financial positioning is, is strong and the experience is there. Um, but, you know, we don't shy away from from restaurants at all. We do a lot of those.
Okay, so the next one is Nicole. You want to unmute yourself and ask your question? I definitely can. How you doing, Daniel? Doing all right. How are you? I'm good. I just wanted to clarify. Uh, so were you saying that we could not use the value of a possible contract um, to get funding from you all? So in terms of like the one I was talking about, projected income versus existing income? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Cor correct. Yeah, um, essentially that is the case. And there's some partners that I'm aware of that, um, you know, if that's truly what you need, um, you know, like, for example, True Fund, similar name to Lift Fund, um, they have a contractor mobilization kind of program. Uh, we, you know, send deals back and forth because we do smaller loans and startups. They do those sorts of things. Um, but yeah, basically we want to make sure that, you um, you have the existing income, right? And a lot of those contracts, um, the kind of amount is based on performance, I guess. So it's not exactly guaranteed. Um, and, you know, we've just seen, I guess, some clients get, uh, yeah, I mean, might sound a little harsh, but like biting off a little more than they can chew in terms of, you know, a large contract that they really aren't able to service based on their history. And perhaps maybe they got the contract because they underbid it compared to some of the other competitors. So I guess just in that kind of context, um, we just want to make sure that it's kind of a nice continuity um, where, you know, the use of funds can certainly be for that. Um, and we want to see your, you know, financial forecast and expansion plan and understand all that. But you really have to have the existing financial performance in place to to work with LeFund on that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, again, like True Fund, I would say I think they can kind of use the contract more so as the collateral or something like this. So um, you know, it's part of that, I guess, uh, talking it through and seeing what's the right solution for you. Happy, thank you so much. My pleasure. Good question, Nicole. I I just wanted to jump in. I I wasn't sure. I just did a good a quick search, but here in New York, we we do have at the state level. Um, um, surety bond assistance programs, and you, you should check out the Louisiana Economic Development um, Organization, which does have a bonding assistance program. And if you have a contract and are MWBE certified and have a contract, I think you may be able to get assistance. Okay, but I have to have that certification. Um, I'm not sure in this, in your in Louisiana, that is the case, but it you do have to have the contract. Got you. understood. So I, I have to have the contract to be qualified, but I don't need the certification as far as New York. In New York, you do. But I uh, would say that if you don't have certification and you are bidding, you're missing out. So I would say that you should look into becoming a certified business and you all should do that for your um, municipalities, states and, and to, to increase opportunity for yourselves. A hundred percent. I do plan on getting my woman down uh, and I do plan on doing... uh, you're, you're actually cutting off on us. Yeah, Nicole, your your phone your phone is uh cutting what off is it, or the not minority I forget what the term is called for, for per state. Nonetheless. Hello? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. listening. Oh, okay. Uh, I was saying I do plan on getting my woman owned and uh, the other certification for minority uh, owned businesses for as far as city state level. Um, but I believe the woman owned right now is a, a year or so backed up. So it's going to be a while before I uh, do receive that certification. And all the national level um, certifications you can get, like you can use to leverage and that may also come with SBA um, uh, women or WO, because they are backdated. Organizations like WeBank are not back backlog, I believe. Um, they're a little easier to get through because they are a um, an affiliate or, or in partnership with SBA. Um, they do have a connection. So you can go through the WeBank W B E N C. Uh, let me just make sure I get it right. 
and I'll put it in the chat. It is a national certification and um, there is a fee for applying to this certification, but it could be beneficial because again, it is national and you could use that to leverage and, it, and you can also apply for the SBA certifications during that process as well. And I'm glad you brought up SBA. We actually have um, Ms. Joanne Lawrence, the Deputy District Director, on with us now. Um, I hate to put her on the spot, but she could come on and, and tell us a little bit about certification. Ms. Lawrence? Okay, um, maybe she stepped away for a moment. Um, we also have the Office of Supply Diversity that does um, the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise certification with the City of New Orleans. Um, and if you go visit our YouTube channel, which I would send um, all you guys a link to that channel, but um, it, tell, it talks about the state and local certification uh, and their process. So if you need any more information about that, just email me and I'll connect you with uh, the Office of Supply Diversity. Um, do we have any more questions? Okay, I assume that's... Um, there is no more questions. So I would like to thank everyone um, for joining today, especially our guest speakers for providing a wealth of information. Within five to 10 business days, this session will be available on the Office of Economic Development YouTube channel, along with previous recorded sessions. Remember to check your email for any upcoming sessions. I normally do them um, at least two months apart. So just look for any upcoming sessions in your email. I hope you will join us the next time. Don't hesitate to reach out if I can help in any kind of way. And everyone have a great day. Thank you, you too. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you all. Thank you.